Hello AP Calculus BC students, Mr. Record here from Avon High School. We're going to take a look at our fourth video that's going to cover example four over topic 9.1, all about parametric equations and calculus. And we're actually going to get into a little bit of calculus now. We're, we're going to take the derivative of a parametric equation. We're actually going to do something with it. We're going to do some of the traditional things that we've done with derivatives in our study of derivatives with functions. So. Let's take a look. Derivatives with para equations. Now what you see here in the blue box is what I'm going to refer to as my theorem 9.2. And it's going to be the parametric form of the derivative. And it basically says if you've got a smooth curve defined by x of x equaling f of t and y equal g of t, then the slope of that curve at a specific point x, y can be given by dx over dy is the derivative of y with respect to t over the derivative of x with respect to t. This probably shouldn't come as a big surprise to you because if you were to multiply by the reciprocals of the denominator, you would see that those dt's cancel and dy over dx is indeed equal to dy over dx. Now this derivative will not exist if this denominator was going to be equal to zero. And that's pretty understandable. Now we have this notion of the horizontal and vertical tangent lines as well that we're going to refer to here in just a moment as we move into our example. But let's go ahead and take a look at example four, part A. We're asked to consider the plane curve defined by the parametric equations x of t is 3t squared, y of t is 2t. And we're given the, the directive to find the equation of the tangent line to this curve when t is equal to 1. So you don't want to really reinvent the wheel here. We know that any time that we want to write the equation of a tangent line, we need a point and we need a slope. And the slope is going to be tied to this idea of the derivative. So the derivative of y with respect to x, by our definition up here, would ask us to take the derivative of y with respect to t which the derivative of 2t is just 2. And then we finish up with the denominator, which is the derivative of this x function with respect to t. That's going to be the general form for our derivative. But we want this derivative very specifically in this problem at time equal 1. So I can go ahead and denote that as such. I can plug 1 in for t. And then, of course, I see that my slope can reduce to 1 third. So I'm certainly on my way. But we don't have our ordered pair just yet. So you're going to have to work a little harder to come up with that ordered pair. And as you can see, your parametric equations are given alongside your time. We just simply plug that time. And I, I'm going to refer to the t as a time, even though it may not represent a time specifically in this case. Oftentimes it does. But I'll plug in my t nonetheless. And I get y of 1 is uh, x of 1 is 3 and y of 1 would be 2. And at this point, you have all the information that you need to write the equation of your tangent line. We're just going to do that in point-slope form. And I'm not going to alter from that. I'm going to leave it in that point-slope form just like this so that I don't run the risk of making a mistake. Now for part b, it asks to find all the points on the curve at which the tangent line is vertical. Well, if we look at the green box, it gives us a heads up on how to figure out when we have vertical and horizontal tangent lines. And it's not going to be that much different from the way that you learned it from an earlier part of the course with, say, implicit uh, relations and their derivatives. It says, at a number t, if dy dt is equal to 0, so we're talking about the numerator equaling 0, but at the same time the denominator doesn't equal 0, a smooth curve would have a horizontal tangent line makes sense. Set the top equal to zero horizontal tangent line. At time t, we're dx dt, so now that is the bottom. If the bottom is equal to zero, but not the top at the same time, then we have a vertical tangent line. It really is as simple as that. The key is you've got to check both. So for instance, for part b, find all the points on the curve at which the tangent line is vertical. What we would need to do here is take the denominator, vertical means Vertical means denominator, right? Vertical is talking about dy dt in this case, equals 0. And we end up with 6t, uh, I'm sorry, dx dt. Let me get that straight, guys. <laughs> the tangent line is vertical. 
is the same as saying when is dx dt equal to zero. And so then I just set my 6t equal to zero. And of course I get t equals zero. That's a, a given there. But at the same time, we want to make sure that the top is not going to equal zero. And I, I see that it's not. So that's good. If I don't acknowledge it, we'll assume that we knew that it was not going to equal zero. And so, boom, I've got that t value. The only thing is it doesn't answer my question. I want to know what are the ordered pairs, what are the points for which that's going to be an issue. So I would go ahead and take my x and my y parametric equation, and I would uh, solve each of those for zero. And as it turns out, you're going to get zero for each of those. And so we end up having our vertical tangent line occurring right at the origin, zero, zero. Anyway, I hope this helps out a little bit. We've got a couple of more videos in store for you for 9.1 that's going to further dive into how to use calculus and parametric equations. So we'll have to stick around for those. As always, thanks for joining.